This movie will demonstrate how DocumentX can be used to create documentation for a web service. So the first thing I'm going to do within DocumentX is to create a new empty project. And once the new empty project has loaded, I'm going to click the add web service command on the ribbon. And that will bring up the add web service dialog. And before I look at the other options on this dialog, I'm just going to give my web service a descriptive name. And I'll accept the default generated title for that web service. So this is just the Bing Translator web service. It's a public API that uh, I'm using for the purposes of this demonstration, a SOAP service. So DocumentX supports documenting web services from a variety of different definitions. The option you choose will depend on the technology that you use to create your web service. So my web service here is a SOAP service with a WSDL available. So I'll choose that option from the list here and I'll identify the URI for the web service WSDL within the URI field under location. If your web service technology doesn't provide a web service definition that Do DocumentX can use here to automatically discover the structure of the service, you can still document it. Just untick the read the web service structure from an existing source option and you can then use the context menu on the project explorer once we've added this web service to the project to manually define the web service resources, operations, etc. I'm going to leave the public URI field as it is but if I was documenting from a local file or from a URI that was different to the location I wanted to include in the documentation, I could type that in here. So this is the location of the web service as it will be described in the generated documentation. So this dialog is now complete and I'll click OK to go ahead and add this web service to the project. What DocumentX has done is to add the web service to the Project Explorer. And if I expand the top level node, I can drill down through the web service to see the various operations contained within this service. Entries have also been added under the XSD schemas node for the XSD schemas referenced by this service. And I can easily exclude items either from the service itself or from the XSD schemas referenced by it just by unticking items on the Project Explorer. Document X has also added a content file or rather a set of content files to the Project Explorer here. So there's one for the web service itself and one for each of the referenced XSD schemas used by that service. So content files are the place in which I can author additional content to supplement what's automatically generated. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick build just to illustrate what DocumentX will generate for you automatically out of the box. So I've just skipped ahead to the end of the build. It took 20 seconds to complete. By default, DocumentX has generated both a CHM file, which is a compiled help file where the entire help system is contained within that single file, and browser help, which is pure HTML designed for hosting on a web or an internet site. Both formats contain a table of contents, an index and a search, making it quick and easy for your users to find the content they're looking for. So I'll open up the generated compiled help file. So we have the contents index and search on the left hand side, navigation pane, and I can drill down through the generated table of contents to look at the various operations beneath. And the web output logically similar, contains the navigation pane down the left with the contents index and search with the content pane on the right and once again I can drill down through the various operations and navigate through the related pages. Each of the operations has been comprehensively documented with the request structures, the underlying XSD types uh, documented, the responses um, and all of the related operations and the web service hyperlinked so that you can easily navigate between all of the related pages. One thing our documentation is currently lacking is descriptive content. It is actually possible in WSTL to include annotations in the web service definition itself and DocumentX will automatically use those if they're available for this, but for this service there are none defined. But that's not a problem as we can use the content file editor to author some descriptive content. So I'll just demonstrate that idea here by adding a description to one of the operations in this web service. So I'll open up the content file for edit by double clicking it on the Project Explorer and I'll drill down to the add translation operation. So when I select that operation on the left, the right hand side is populated ready for authoring. The editor looks very much like the generated output we saw earlier, but contains these bordered areas that represent the editable regions of the page. So I can simply start typing directly within any of those editable regions. So I'm going to go ahead and add a summary description to this add translation operation and I'll also add a description to the first of the request body parameters here just to illustrate 
And finally, I'll scroll down to the bottom of the page and add a new see also link to one of the other operations in this web service. And there we see that appear. If I now switch to preview, I'll see my descriptive content that I added both to the head of the page and also to that first parameter. And if I scroll down, I'll also see my custom method see also link that I added. And this editor that I'm using here is a fully featured XHTML editor, so I can include features such as images, uh, apply star rules, apply formatting, include hyperlinks throughout the documentation. Beyond the textual content, I can use additional content items here in the Concept File Editor to, for instance, mark this item as new in the generated output, um, exclude items from the generated documentation, uh, apply build flags to create more complex filtering rules in the Build Profile Editor. I can also add custom index keywords for this item, or use the content from content item to copy the content from another uh, operation either within this service or another service in the same project so that I can reduce duplication if I have common descriptions I use in several places. So as well as adding descriptions to the automatically generated topics using that content file editor, I can also author completely new additional topics. I'm going to do that now using the new topic command on the ribbon and I'm going to add a background topic and add a simple description. Once you've created the new topic you can add it to the table of contents just by using drag and drop and I'm going to place that right at the head of the table of contents as our introductory topic. The document X placeholder node you can see here is where all of the automatically generated table of contents nodes will appear. Back on the Project Explorer in the Build Profile Editor I can find a page of specific settings relating to the web service output that allow me to tweak the content and format of what's being generated and beyond the options that are specific to web services there are a range of other settings you can use to control the output format and content on the other pages within the Build Profile Editor here. I won't be covering those in detail in this movie but just be aware that the Build Profile Editor is the place to find those settings. And If you're looking for something specific you can always use the search box on the ribbon to try and find it. So for example if I wanted to find how to change the copyright notice I can just click on one of those search results and it will take me to the location within the Build Profile Editor where I can find those settings. Um, as another example, perhaps I want to add a logo to the header of each generated page. And once again, it takes me directly to that page within the Build Profile Editor. And even if you don't find any direct hits within the user interface from your search in the box up here, it will take you directly to the Help Hub, where it will search both within the online help, in our knowledge base, and also in our list of movies to try and find you some information related to the keyword you're searching on. So I'll just quickly repeat that build I uh, did earlier again and in the generated output we can see that conceptual topic I added to the project at the head of the table of contents and if I drill down through to the operation we we're working with I can see my summary description, the summary against the parameter and the see also link I authored in the content file editor. So that was a demonstration of documenting a SOAP-based web service from a WSDL definition. DocumentX also supports documenting REST services, which have a slightly different logical structure. So to demonstrate a couple of the differences, I'll just open up this one of the sample projects that ships with DocumentX, which is a documentation for a REST service, REST web service documentation. So in REST services, there is typically an organization hierarchy of resource groups, resources, and operations. And that's what's being reflected here on the Project Explorer, if I draw down through the various hierarchy levels. And we also have, uh, this is a Swagger-based REST service, we also have a description of the various JSON types that are referenced and used in different operations in the service on the Project Explorer. If I quickly open up the content file editor for that service, and navigate down to the create user operation. You can see that firstly the structure of the request JSON is neatly described in this overview diagram beneath the request. But there is also some descriptive content already appearing here in the grey background box just above my editable summary area. And this is content that is automatically obtained from the API definition. The fact that I can see it whilst I'm editing here is great because it means I can easily avoid duplication. So I don't need to create a new description for this request because one is already obtained directly from the web service definition. I can still add some supplementary content in here though. For example, I could add some sample data for the request. If I scroll down to the sample data section, and if I switch to preview, 
I'll see that sample data appear formatted in the output. But I could also add some additional content to the summary section. And if I now switch to preview, I'll see that text has been merged with the uh, text that's coming directly from the web service description. Now that is behavior you can customize according to your workflow. For example, in the build profile editor, I can choose to use content file editor in preference to the web service definition content so that I can override it. And the setting you choose will depend on your particular authoring workflow and what you consider to be the definitive source of your documentation content. So I'm just going to go ahead and build this project and just highlight a couple of differences in the structure reflected in the output. So in this web service, on the overview page here, I can see that uh, it's grouped according to the resource groups I've established within the Project Explorer. And there's also a section for my JSON schema items. And under each of the resource groups and resources, I can see the various operation kinds, color highlighted for get, post, delete, etc. And the structure here of resource groups, operations is reflected in the table of contents, making a large complex API much easier to navigate. And I'll just briefly visit the page that we added the additional content to, and we can see the additional summary content and my sample data both included in the output here, alongside the content automatically obtained from the web service definition. So that concludes this movie demonstrating how you can use DocumentX to quickly and easily document web services from a variety of different web service definition kinds. If you've got any questions or suggestions, please do contact us either by email to support at innovasys.com or directly from the smile, frown or support request buttons on the help and support ribbon tab in DocumentX and Help Studio.